board with uh, East Hardwick because things don't change. As a matter of fact, for 135 years, the population has remained exactly the same in East Hardwick. And the reason for that is because every time a baby is born, somebody has to leave town. Thank you both. If you're insulted by that, stick around. Well, it's the same old, same old stuff. The same old, same old, think you've had enough. It's the same old, same old, always how it's been. What goes around, it comes around, here it comes again. Winter up in Hardwick, it's always frigid cold. Been that way since long before the townhouse got this old. We get through those icy blasts, we actually boast. It's neighbor helping neighbor that keeps us warm as toast. It's the same old, same old stuff. The same old, same old, think you've had enough. It's the same old, same old, always how it's been. It comes around, it comes around, and here it comes again. I'm from Vermont, do what I want, that's always how it goes. The world outside's a window where I long to press my nose. Then outside I looked around, I saw, I heard, I roam. The longer I was gone from here, the more I missed my home. It's the same old, same old stuff. The same old, same old, think you've had enough. It's the same old, same old, always how it's been. Goes around, it comes around, here it comes again. Every day we live the way we want to treat it be. I'll treat you like you treat me, that's a-okay with me. Sounds so very funny, that's exactly what I want. It's as sweet as maple syrup from the mountains of Vermont. It's the same old, same old stuff. It's the same old, same old, you never get enough. It's the same old, same old, always how it's been. What goes around, it comes around, and here it comes again. All right, thank you. I love to hear screechers out there. It's beautiful. You get the same noise when the uh, rat runs across the, uh, the floor at the Legion dance in Hardwick. That was a song, of, uh, look, I have to explain it. Uh, that was a song about uh, wanting to leave Vermont, which I, I did after I got out of Hardwick Academy, third generation graduate at Hardwick Academy. And um, I went to England and went to Florida and went all over the place and uh, I sure missed it and I was happy to come home. Here's a tune. Uh, about kind of the same thing. From the top of a hill on the home place, I once had the perfect view of the house, the barn, and the river that ran through the good life I knew. But behind my back, I heard a distant rumble, curious. I just had to see. Little did I know what 
was waiting as I listened to a voice calling me. That's when I heard the highway asking me if I would like a ride. And that's when I heard the highway I didn't even stop to say goodbye The road led me on to many cities Where I would get my hopes up high That I would find a great job and a woman To share the good things in life but my heart would grow restless and I'd wander I couldn't find a job that I could hold And the woman that I loved couldn't stop me When I heard a voice to say it's time to go And that's when I heard the highway Asking me if I would like a ride And that's when I heard the highway And I never even stopped to say goodbye The folks sold a farm to live in town now It all seems a little sad to me Sometimes I climb up on that hilltop And wonder why I ever chose to leave And that's when I heard the highway Asking me if I would like a ride And that's when I heard the highway and I didn't even stop to say goodbye And I didn't even stop to say goodbye Thank you very much. Well, it seems to be warming up. <laughs> Not everyone has your hands in your pockets. So I th tell you, we were lucky. Uh, coming up from Burlington, I ran through a couple of different rainstorms and when the sun came out, it's like somebody switched on a light and everything came to, to beautiful color. And I'm um, really happy to be here, and I'm happy that the, uh, the weather turned out without a snowstorm or a rainstorm. And I just want to say uh, thank you, folks, for uh, doing a special event for uh, Senator Leahy. Uh, he has just done, well, I need to say what he's done for Vermont, but he's a wonderful fellow, and he loves the arts, and he loves all kinds of different things that make our life so rich here in Vermont. And uh, I'm honored to be a part of the event, and honored to be on the same stage with John Gale Moore. All good. So, uh, let's see. I want to be sure and get a couple of new songs that I've written in. Uh, Let's see, I guess, uh, our friend Anson Tebbets, who is the Secretary of Agriculture uh, here in Vermont, uh, asked me to write a song uh, for him and for the Ag Department, and he has uh, a pet peeve, and that pet peeve is when you uh, you go to the dairy case in a in a grocery store, and there's all this stuff in there that has not a, nothing to do with a cow or with milk, and uh, it's just um, not it's not right. So uh, anyway, this is I wrote this last Tuesday, so I don't have music to it. So now we're going to have a poetry recitation, and the, and the name of it is Moo Cow Milk, and it goes like this. Moo cow milk, that's the only milk for me. Moo cow milk, it's as real as real can be. Moo cow milk from the mountains of Vermont. Moo cow milk, it's the real milk I want. The dairy farmers of Vermont have a question for you now. What's this milk in the dairy case that never touched a cow? Squash a pecan, squash a cashew, squash some oats and all. Prop it up in the dairy case and call it milk. What gall? 
Senator Bobby Starr from way up Orleans Way, he tells it like he is, and Bobby always has his say. Even when they call it milk, he says, what's the use? Milk it isn't, and I swear, it's really just nut juice. <laughs> Here's the course. Moo cow milk, that's the only milk for me. Moo cow milk, it's as real as real can be. Moo cow milk from the mountains of Vermont. Moo cow milk, it's the real milk I want. Now we've got to get the ag department in here. Vermont has more cows than people 70 years ago. Today it's gone the other way. It's re quite a loss, you know. The ag department says it clear. No ifs or ands or buts. <laughs> Here's what we proclaim today. Vermonters don't milk nuts. Boo oh, hey, we got one more, one more line here. Yeah. <coughs> Moo cow milk, that's the only milk for me. Moo cow milk, it's as real as real can be. Moo cow milk from the mountains of Vermont. Moo cow milk, it's the real milk I want. And the last line, moo cow milk, I got to tell you now, if you call it milk here in Vermont, you better have a cow. <laughs> Thank you both. Well, I got time for two more songs before uh, the festivities begin, and I uh, thank you all very much for your patience. Uh, it's been been a lot of fun here. Uh, Rusty Parker Memorial Park. I played here many times with my band Rick and the All Star Ramblers, Western Swing Band. Um, here's a a song I wrote about. I hate it when people say oh, I wrote this, I wrote that. Anyway, when COVID came along, put us right out of business for several years, and uh, so I've got a song for you. And it's a uh, kind of a Hardwick blues. <laughs> And of course, it's politically incorrect, so if we offend anyone, I'll try to get to you by the next song. I'll get everybody uh, offended here. My kissing days are over, how I used to love that task. Back before the governor said, you gotta wear a mask. Every time you leave your home, though he said you better not. I try to do whatever he said, I believe in Governor Scott. My kissing days are over, how I used to love that game. I'd lick my lips and pucker up, and then take careful aim. I'd zone in and close my eyes and try to keep from blinking. She would do the very same, who knows what she was thinking. Ever since coronavirus has shut down our Vermont, 18 weeks all by myself, I'm missing what I want. Rattling around old Grambler Ranch, my lips are feeling lonely, especially when my friends are gone, for company me only. My kissing days are over, I tell you now I miss them. When the governor says that masks are off, when I see some girls I'll kiss them. Maybe one will smile at me and slide me a little slack. She'll close her eyes and pucker up and even kiss me back. But until that day, until that day, until that day, my 
by kissing Death Rover. <laughs> Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, I got time for one more song before the festivities get going here and uh, thank you son for coming out and I thank every each and every one of you for coming out and honoring Senator Leahy. So back up my Hardwick, we're going to Hardwick now. Um, when the prom came along there was only one place to buy a corsage or buy flowers for your date. And that was Harold Holcomb's funeral home. And I'll tell you, it really set up an evening of romance to go by the funeral home and pick up your flowers for your girl. You can't make it up. You can't live it down. That's just the way things happened in this Northeast Kingdom town. Hills of solid granite, sometimes have a crack. Things that happened long ago, they're never coming back. I'll tell you a story, and I swear that it's true, about Hardwick Academy in 1962. Junior prom where dreams come true came along that year. I asked a classmate to the dance. I overcame my fear. Harold Holcomb's funeral home was the only place in town where you could buy fresh flowers to pin upon her gown. You had to call the week before to order in advance. Then you corsage up and take it to the dance you can't make it up you can't live it down that's just the way things happened in this northeast kingdom town hills of solid granite sometimes have a crack things that happened long ago they're never coming back downstairs one big cooler they kept everything inside the dead the flowers that they sold and the and the formaldehyde did not matter to the dead they have no sense of smell but the flowers from the cooler look like heaven smell like hell midnight by tussie on the girls the boys all wore old spice the flowers from the cooler they didn't smell that nice the overwhelming you to pew rising like the tide wafting from corsages was all formaldehyde you can't make it up you can't live it down that's just the way things happened in this northeast kingdom town hills of solid granite sometimes have a crack Things that happened long ago, they're never coming back. You pinned the corsage to her dress or tied it on her wrist. And when you danced the slow dance, it was rising like the mist. But dancing to Ray Hussey's band and holding your girl tight, everything was A-OK -okay on that very special night. Today I go to funerals, that familiar smell surrounding. I look into the casket, it sets my heart a pounding. It's amazing how formaldehyde still makes me feel romance. Takes me back to junior prom and makes me want to dance. You can't make it up. You can't live it down, that's just the way things happened in this Northeast Kingdom town. Hills of solid granite, sometimes have a crack, and things that happened long ago, they're never coming back. Thank you very much, have a great day. Well, I'm Ted Brady, and I am the Executive Director of the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, I'd like to welcome you here to this celebration of Senator Leahy's contributions to Vermont, to our towns, to our cities, to our villages, and to our downtowns. Let's hear it for Senator Leahy.
I, I also need to specifically thank the people that are listed to my left, and I might need to cheat, because all of this would not be possible uh, without the, the people that recognized Senator Leahy's contributions and said, let's have a party in one of our downtowns. And that's, uh, of course, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, the Preservation Trust of Vermont, Housing Conservation, Vermont Housing and Conservation Board, uh, the uh, Vermont Agency of Commerce and Community Development. You would have thought I would have remembered that one, Josh, without having to look. Uh, also, the Vermont Council on Rural Development, uh, the Vermont Association of Planning and Development Associations, the Vermont Regional Development Corporations, the Vermont Association of Chambers of Commerce Executives, the Revitalizing Waterbury, of course. Let's hear it for Karen and the folks at Revitalizing Waterbury. The Vermont Housing Finance Agency, Evernorth, the Vermont Arts Council, and the Vermont Downtown Coalition. They have thrown this party for Senator Leahy and invited you here to celebrate with us. Thank you so much. Yeah, do it again. Today is a special day not because of Senator Leahy, but because it's Indigenous Peoples Day. And I think as we gather to celebrate our downtowns and our villages and these places that we have made, it's important to recognize that we did not make these places first. The, the, the land we are on, the communities that have been in this, uh, in this state for centuries, really are those of the Abenaki Nation. And we're extremely, yep, I like it, thank you. Extremely lucky to be joined today by Roland Bluto, who is an elder in the Nolhegan Band of the Cusack Abenaki Nation to welcome us and to celebrate that fact. Roland, yes. you're right behind me. <laughs> Is this the word I'm gonna use? Yeah, you can. Okay. I'd like to start off by saying kwai kwai, hello, welcome. In Deloise, Roland, my name is Roland. As you heard, I am an elder in the Nalhegan Band of the Kuwasak Abenaki. Our tribe is located in the northeast corner of the Vermont, up in the Northeast Kingdom. I have been asked to do a welcome or a greeting song. I have picked one of our, our favorite ones that would do. So I would like to play for you and sing for you. If my drum sounds okay, I've tried to keep it warm. And then afterwards, I'd like to say a few words. Yo, Guano Day, Guano.
Thank you. Senator Leahy, my chief, Chief Don Stevens, couldn't be here today with regrets. He asked me to extend to you and your wife his most sincere congratulations on your retirement. He wishes you a long and happy, healthy retirement. I would like to echo that as myself. I would also like to say, Uli Uni, thank you for the many years of service you have given to Vermont. And Uni Uni, thank you for your support of the Abnaki people here in Vermont. Your voice is gonna be very well missed in Congress, I know that. My sincere thank you, Senator. I think that I think that uh, is a great way to put what we're here today celebrating in perspective. And that was beautiful, Roland. Thank you so much, and please thank Chief Stevens for us. Don't use all your clapping just yet. It's a long program. So we're going to be celebrating our downtowns and our communities today. And I think it's great that the first way we're going to celebrate them is by thanking the people that protect them every day. Our firefighters and our uh, law enforcement uh, across the entire state. I will say that from my time in Senator Leahy's office, about 13 years, uh, <laughs> I hate to say this, but we were in a lot of downtowns after some serious tragedies, whether it be flooding, uh, whether it be fire, uh, and there was always a fire chief, always some firemen there who worked to save these historic places and protect the life uh, of those. And I remember in St. Johnsbury, in St. Albans, in Randolph, go down a list. Uh, downtown revitalization uh, is actually uh, linked pretty closely to the men and women of our fire service. I also have to remember the one time, uh, and our, we're going to introduce some firefighters next, so this is, it's all relevant. Uh, the one time uh, I, I was in St. Johnsbury with Sandra Leahy, and uh, we, had, we had secured a grant for uh, them to purchase a new fire truck, a Quint, which is like a ladder truck, but it has a bucket on the end of the ladder. Do I have that right, Chris? Roughly? Yeah. Roughly. And uh, the senator had a newly uh, formed security detail that would travel around with him as Senate Pro Tem at the time. And uh, we get there, and the fire truck's out there, and it's just, you know, a photo op and a celebration of the grant. And Senator Leahy makes some words. I think it was Brad Reed. Brad Reed makes uh, some words out there. And, and the senator goes, do you mind if uh, I go for a ride? I'm like, what, in a truck? He's like, no, in the bucket. <laughs> And they extended the ladder 250 feet or so, 200 feet above St. Johnsbury, and the security team was having a coronary. <laughs> so I am pleased to introduce uh, Chris Doobie, the president of the Professional Firefighters of Vermont, to uh, say a few words. Chris, Thank all you. yours. I'm, I'm short, so I'll get to you. <laughs> oh, God, that was horrible. We good to go? Great. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's, it's an honor to be up here. An absolute privilege to be beside such a great leader, Senator Leahy. So yes, my name is Chris Doobie. I'm the president of the Professional Firefighters of Vermont. Um, so I, I, I represent the 13 full-time career fire departments in the state that are under the auspice of the International Association of Firefighters. So I'm going to speak specifically to that because the Senator has been a great friend of ours through the years. I'm also going to talk about public safety and fire as a whole. So as many of you know, from his early days as a prosecutor, right? right? All the way up to where he is today, he has been 100% behind public safety. To give you a couple examples, I'll give you on the fire side. I, I, my brothers in the blue and the green will speak on the, on the other side. When, after 9-11, the horrific events of that, the senator was instrumental in getting funding to the state of Vermont that actually set the course for the USAR team that we currently have today. If it wasn't for his leadership, we wouldn't have got the funding or the training that we currently have benefited from through the years. There's two specific grants that I can tell you that the state as a whole has benefited from because of the Senate. One is the FIRE Act grant. That is for five fire departments around the state have all benefited in some way or another. That is for funding for um, air packs, protective equipment, fire apparatus, 
Um, any other need of equipment and training that our members have seen? My own department in Hartford has, has benefited from that. So thank you, Senator, on that. And more importantly, the, what's known as a SAFER Act or the SAFER Grant, which has um, allowed communities that through the struggles of, you know, when it comes down to fighting for budgets to keep staffing the adequate levels, he's been instrumental in keeping that funding up, which I know at times can be a challenge down here in D.C. It's easy to cut fire and police, but I'm going to tell you, we thank you for that. We've seen it in the city of South Burlington in particular. They were able to increase the staffing on all three shifts by two back about 10, I think it was like eight or 10 years ago. So you've been instrumental in that. So yes, when we heard that the Senator was retiring, of course it leaves a big void in our heart because you have been a tremendous friend of ours. We wanted to do something special for him. So we tossed around a bunch of ideas. We thought about plaques, we thought about statues and stuff like that. And I had the fortune of being at an event in, in um, back in March down in DC when we were down there for our legislative conference that he invited us to was dinner. Which by the way, thank you, that was primo. It was good. So <laughs> talking with his staff and more importantly the past president of this organization, Matt Vinci, who was a good friend of his, we came up with something unique to get you, okay? Um, a little history, so we have a helmet we're gonna give you. It's unique because it's a helmet that was worn by a firefighter in Vermont and it was given to me by my chief that hired me, John Wood when he was in Bellows Falls. So it actually has some history in the city of the town of Bellows Falls. So when we got it, it was a little weathered. So we had to get it refurbed. So, <laughs> so we, we got it back as close to its luster as it originally was. And then the next challenge we had was coming up with something unique to put on the front. Has everybody seen a fire helmet? They got the shield of the front on it. So after tossing around some ideas, we had a retired firefighter out of Burlington who specializes in this make us a custom front specifically for you. So the purpose of the helmet is so you can display it, whether it be in your office, your house, and realize that you've always been a friend of ours. So, Josh, I'll have you bring it up. It's at, yeah, right down there. So Senator Leahy, on behalf of members past and present of the Professional Firefighters of Vermont, Just a little token of our appreciation. So it is an authentic helmet. It was worn. It has a custom front on it, specific to you. And for all your hard work and dedication on behalf of our members, we appreciate you 100%. You. You're going to be missed, so. <laughs> and it's truly Vermont. The helmet was assigned to a member in Vermont, worn in Vermont. The refurb was done by a chief in New London, New Hampshire. I apologize for that. <laughs> but the front, and he actually initially, Bruce Bourgeois, he retired out of Burlington Fire. Wow. And he does custom helmet fronts. So, and if you look, the they have a custom little the Mont emblem on the it does. eagle. Yeah. Wow. You certainly deserve it. So, you're always going to be one of us. Never Thank forget you. that. So. <laughs> <I'm good. laughs> Don't Thank do you. it. Don't fall for it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Senator. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, if I'd been wearing this when I fell, maybe I'd be better off. <laughs> maybe you wouldn't have fallen. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. So, there's uh, having some time in Leahy's office. I see Gretchen Series here, who's a graduate of Sarah DeLahey's office. Waterbury's own Mary Miller, a graduate of uh, Sarah DeLahey's office. I know many of you uh, are big Mary fans and have been for years. You have to write talking points for the senator every once in a while. And I remember when I first wrote some talking points, which were just some bullets to tell you a little about, you know, the event. I wrote a bullet that said, when I was state's attorney, and uh, the chief of staff says, Ted, you don't need to write that. And I go, why not? He goes, because the senator's going to say it, whether you say it right or not. <laughs> so if you don't know, that the state's attorney is kind of the top cop, right? And Ron Kilborn knows this. Uh, uh, you know, you're the, you're the big cheese. You get the blue light in your car, you are the county's top cop. And I got to say, the senator has had a, 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 a place in his spot for policemen. You know, he'll tell stories about going to Ireland with Bill Clinton, and instead of telling you about solving the uh, you know, peace troubles in Ireland, he will tell you about the conversation he had with an Irish cop at a, you know, a checkpoint. If you're going to an event about downtowns and about um, you know, sprinklers, he's going to be in the corner talking to the cop. That's who Senator Leahy is. He sees himself, I think, still as a member of law enforcement. 
just like every little kid, right? And so I'm, we're really lucky here to be joined by uh, the Colonel of the State Police, uh, Matt Birmingham, to share a little about uh, Sandra Leahy's relationship to law enforcement. Colonel. Thank you. Uh, it's truly an honor to be here representing uh, law enforcement with the chief and the sheriff. Um, I always like to say my, my career in law enforcement started 25 years ago in Senator Leahy's office. I'm an alumnus as well of, of his office when uh, then FBI Director Louis Free visited uh, and I had an opportunity as a 20 year old intern to, to meet the director of the FBI and it inspired me to get into this work. They tried unsuccessfully, Senator, to recruit me, uh, so I stayed and, uh, you know, I loved Vermont, so I didn't want to leave, and uh, the rest is history. Um, I can't, I, you know, you're going to hear it a, a lot today, but the Senator has been unwavering in his support of law enforcement in uh, my entire career. Uh, I had the honor of being in the Drug Task Force, which is, a, which is a unit that serves the whole state, and the Senator has been instrumental in providing grant money and funding to keep the drug task force functioning for over 30 years. And we're truly grateful that is, a, that is a service that is provided to all Vermonters. More importantly though, I can honestly tell you that the Senator's work has actually saved police officers' lives. Uh, and, I, and when I say that, I mean through the Bulletproof Vest program that you have been instrumental in pushing around this country. He secured funding for Bulletproof Vests for law enforcement around the country, which has literally saved lives. For, for that, I uh, want to thank you, yes. Incredibly important program, Senator. Uh, so those are the two programs. There, there are too many to, uh, I would take up the entire time here and I need to let the Chief and the Sheriff come. Uh, his support is unwavering of law enforcement and for that we, we thank you. I do have something on behalf of the State Police that I would like to present to you, Senator. This is a uh, trooper uh, statue. It's a, a parade rest. The, the, the special thing about this statue is that it was only issued to retiring sworn members of the state police. So today I'm going to make you an honorary member of the state police so that you can have this statue as, as an honorary state police trooper. Well, thank you. Thank you. people taller. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Oh, you, got, you want me to introduce yeah, you, Pete? Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't know if you were going to do that I'm or if that's my job. I'm not going to tell you to do anything yeah. wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, now I'd like to turn it over to Chief Brian Pete of the Montpelier Police Department, also representing uh, the Vermont Chiefs Association. Chief Pete. Shorter and uglier. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Brian Pete. I'm the Chief of Police in Montpelier, Vermont. I'm also the President of the Vermont Association of Chiefs of Police. And, uh, you know, again, there's, there's no other way to say it, um, but thank you, Senator. Thank you, Marcel. And uh, I'll just, uh, on behalf of the Vermont Association of Chiefs of Police, there's a vacuum. Uh, I remember the conversations we were having when when it became public that you, uh, you were going to retire. And the happiness, but at the same time, the, uh, the sense of who's going to step up and who's going who's to be a leader for us, especially in a time that, that's a, a very critical time for law enforcement right now. And uh, so, so definitely you will be missed. Uh, on a personal note, uh, my first time in Vermont, I remember uh, I got here, I was still half asleep. I think the Senator knew it. But somehow, some way, right as everything was coming out and I was about to start my job in, uh, in Montpelier, I get a phone call, 802 phone number, and then I'm like, Ugh, I'm still groggy, and I, and I answer it. And it's like, Brian Pete, this is Senator Leahy. And I'm like, oh, shoot. <laughs> and, and then he says, did, you, did I wake you? And I'm like, no, 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 of course you didn't wake me up. Uh, so I, but I woke up really quickly because um, uh, uh, Senator Leahy has always been uh, a friend of law enforcement. We all know who Senator Leahy is, anyone who, who has taken this sworn oath. And, and that meant the world to me, and that's when I knew exactly what type of, of leader uh, you were. Um, so uh, without belaboring it, first I'd like to also acknowledge Marcel, because <laughs> thank you very much, because there is no way in the world 
uh, anyone can ever serve a, a position uh, and serve their community in such a way without the strength, the grace, and the conviction back at home. And we, especially in law enforcement, know that. And we know the sacrifices that you and your family have made. So again, on behalf of the Montpelier Police Department and the Vermont Chiefs of Police, I'd like to present these flowers to you. to have these flowers, but I want you to know that I'm accepting them on behalf of all of your spouses, all the first responders, because they have, they have a very difficult road to, to go as well. So I'm really touched and honored. Thank you. And then for uh, Senator Leahy, I just would read, really quickly read the inscription. Uh, Senator Patrick Leahy, a noble leader, answers not to the trumpet calls of self-promotion, but to the hushed whispers of necessity, Marley Martin. And sir, we thank you and Marcel for your many years of support to Vermont and to our profession. So thank you, sir. I was, telling, I was telling the chief that I remember that phone call to him. I remember that phone call to him. It was kind of early, but I was at the office and I called and uh, I said, uh, Chief, it's Patrick Leahy. I heard this pause and it was like, Patrick Leahy? He said, Really? <laughs> and uh, I said, Oh, yeah, this why I congratulate you. And I, I had a career in law enforcement. It was the best job I've ever had, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'd like to introduce Sheriff Banya. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here, I have a dual role today. Um, I'm here as Sheriff of Orange County and representing the Vermont Sheriff's Association. And uh, we have a plaque for, from the Vermont Sheriff's Association for Senator Patrick Leahy's unwavering work on a Bulletproof Vest partnership. Many of you don't know, this partnership has been going on for about 30 years now, I believe right in 1992. And, uh, so the first, it's a plaque from the Vermont Sheriff's Association. And then I also, my second role is president of the National Sheriff's Association. We have this, another award. It's the American Cowboy, the American Sheriff. And it's one of six that were made and the mold is broken. So on behalf of thousands of law enforcement officers across this country. <clears throat> I want to say thank you for your unwavering support for law enforcement. Over 13,000 jurisdictions throughout the country received bulletproof vests. Over $550 million the senator was able to procure for law enforcement. So thank you. If I want to thank you, and I want to thank those, it's one of the few um, things in a partisan era recently in the Senate. It was uh, the Bulletproof Vest program. I just call it the Bulletproof Vest program. The Republican leader of the Senate had it changed to have my name on it. But what I remember was one of your colleagues from another state testified before my, the Judiciary Committee when I was chairing that. And we had to reauthorize the program. And there were some on the committee who didn't want to reauthorize it because of the cost and all. And I had a witness before the committee, a young uh, trooper from another state. 
He was there with his mother and father, his wife and his three children. He said, let me tell you a story. And he's on routine patrol, stopped a car, he's stepping out. The, the person in the other car stepped out and shot him twice in the chest. And he said, I thought I would never see my wife, my children, my parents again. But because of this, I was. He reached under, pulled up the bulletproof vest. He had, you could see two holes. One had, still had the 40 caliber slug in it. And he said, this saved my life. And now that's why I have my family still here with me. I can still be in law enforcement, a job I love. I thanked him and I turned to the committee. I said, I move adoption of the reauthorization of the clerk will call the rule. Well, I kind of slipped the rules a little bit, but nobody objected. And guess what? Pass unanimously. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> we tried to, the National Sheriff's, we tried to do some research on how many people were saved, but we found out it's thousands, thousands of officers. So, Senator, thank you. Well, in my last act as chairman of this appropriations committee, you better believe it's going to be reauthorized. Thank you. I don't want to take a chance if anything happened to it. Senator? The podium is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I don't want to keep you waiting too long on this, but I want to thank everybody here. Marcel and I are looking forward to this. You know, when you're born in Montpelier, grew up there, lived the same home on 136 State Street and until this young woman from Burlington, Vermont, spirited me away. And we got married and uh, celebrated our 60th wedding anniversary this summer. So I'm glad to be here with you today. I'm especially glad because after my fall this spring, uh, after 31 days, 31 days in the hospital, uh, you know, I grew up with an Italian mother. I knew good food. It's not the food they serve in the hospital. And, uh, but I had a wonderful nurse who was there eight to 10 hours every single one of those days, and that's Marcel. So, I, uh, I had to learn to basically to walk again, and I did have a wheelchair for a while, a black wheelchair. I was gonna use it going to the Senate floor. And it has Batman insignias on the side. <laughs> Somebody said, well, does that violate the rules of the Senate floor? I said, well, those rules, the president pro tem has to say whether the rule would allow this. I went, he said, it's OK. <laughs> and, but I think of the, all of you who worked so hard to pull this together, Ted Brady, Monica DG, Bonnie. Uh, Boy, my mother would give me heck if I mispronounced that name. <laughs> and revitalizing Waterbury. After all, we live in the neighboring town now of Middlesex. And Indigenous Peoples Day, think, Roland, that meant so much to hear you sing and play. And please give Chief Stevens my very best. And what a wonderful welcome song. And then, Few words of gratitude to Vermont's first responders. Vermont's finest. Chris Duby, Colonel Matt Birmingham. He was, he started off as a young intern in my office and he realized he taught us all, all he could. We, we weren't able to learn anymore, so uh, he left. And he's, he's right, Louis Free, the director of the FBI, and his family are staying with us at our home here. Uh, for the weekend, it had been a terrible uh, situation at that time where the convict had shot several people, including wounding police officers and border patrol officers. 
And Louis came down to my office and uh, he met Matt. He said, what do you want to do? When you finish, I want to go into law enforcement. Well, would you like the FBI? I said, no, I want to stay here in Vermont. And all the time, Louis Freeman was director of the FBI. Every time I'd see him, how's Matt Birmingham? What's he doing? And he still speaks with you with pride. And Sheriff Bonyak, you know, I think one of the most difficult things be sheriff in a rural area. So, so he went right there, okay. Um, I still don't turn around quite as quickly as before, but the hip is improving. Uh, sheriff, you know what it is because people expect you to solve all the problems not at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, but at 3 o'clock in the morning. And you have to. And Chief Brian Pete, you know what that is, what that is like. Uh, everybody thinks of Vermont, a bucolic state, no, no crime problems. We do have crime problems. They're more than they were and have increased over the years. But we also have honest police officers, and they protect all of us. So you, you deserve this inspiration. I, I have worked so hard to make sure you can approach public safety with expertise and fairness, commitment to the community, showing the problems can be solved, communities can be safer. But in the work I've had both as chair of appropriations and chair of judiciary committee, so many times I relied on my experience in law enforcement as a prosecutor. So much so that one of the times I had mentioned that at a committee and probably the eighth time member had heard me say that, said, you were in law enforcement? <laughs> yes, I was, and proudly. So, Chris, send my sincere regards and gratitude to all Vermont firefighters too. I well remember working with them as state's attorney in Chittenden County on arson cases. I remember being there at three o'clock in the morning and seeing them gathering information along with the um, law, law enforcement officers there, including firefighters who had barely escaped with their own lives after an arson case. And I think we're 625,000 people here in Vermont, but 625,000 very, very special people. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, you know, in, in the office, in the office, I had to be nice to Ted because he's bigger than I am. I'm taller, not bigger. <laughs> There's nothing Ted has taken on in this state that he hasn't done in a superb way, so thank you. Thank you, sir. I want to, again, thank you, Senator Leahy. Thank you to our <coughs> members of the law enforcement and fire community. Give you an idea what our program is. Uh, we have a special guest in John Gilmore, Vermont's own John Gilmore, is going to share a couple of songs. We're going to take a little musical uh, break between this and our next program so you can grab a, a piece of pizza while you listen or a snack and uh, John's going to share a couple of songs for the senator and hopefully get us all into the shade for a couple of minutes while, uh, while we take a break. John are you ready or do I need to keep stretching this? Oh well, he's got the guitar that was a that was a key thing. Indescribable. <clears throat> it's an indescribable honor to be a part of this celebration. Um, the Leahy's family and my family have been friends since the late 70s. And um, so I've got two songs for the senator right now. I mean, let's face it, 
Batman and the Grateful Dead. How could we lose? Um, so, I don't know any Batman songs other than da 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 but I'm not going to do that. So here's some. Uh, Robert Hunter, the Grateful Dead, for Patrick. If my words did glow, with the golden sunshine And my tunes were played on a harp Unstrung would hear my voice Come through the music Would you hold it near As it were your own It's a handy down The thoughts are broken Perhaps they're better left unsung. I don't know. Don't really care. Let there be songs to fill the air. Ripple in still water. Where there is no pebble toss, nor wind to blow, reach out your hand. If your cup be empty, if your cup is full, may it be again, let it be known. There is a fountain that was not made. Road. No simple highway between the dawn and the dark of night. And if you should go, no one may follow because that path is full. Your steps alone. Ripple in still water Where there is no pebble toss Nor wind to blow And if you should choose To lead who must follow But if you fall You fall alone And if you should stand then who's to guide you? Oh, if I knew the way, I would take you home. La 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 la. Everybody, la 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 So now, you know, I'm going to do one more during this first set of mine. And uh, for me, uh, Patrick Leahy is Vermont, synonymous. Uh, I've been here, as I said, since 77. And um, pretty much ever since I've been here, he has represented me in more ways than one, more than politics, more than anything. And um, so I'm gonna sing this for you guys. And I wanna also honor Marcel, in case you haven't heard. Marcel just had a um, UVM research ship named after her. It's the Marcel. And um, so I love them dearly, and uh, this is for them. My reason for being is music. That 
reach a few hearts if I can. There's nothing that feels like the feeling of touching. And with a gift of a song, I can try. There's a jewel in the heart of New England where the music I live by is born. She's a simple, sweet tune for the asking. She's home for the love of Vermont, for the warmth of her hand, for the freedom she shares with the souls of the land, where the gentle belong and where the feel is to be strong. She's bestowed her song on us all. She tells you to follow what feels right, gives you reason to love what you are. She's allowed me to live by my music and my heart. Now the tunesmiths can sing there till their voices but whisper, and the poets can rhyme till the tides have no rhythm. And the potters can throw till the wheel of the world spins no more, no more. For the love of Vermont, for the warmth of her hand, for the freedom she shares with the souls of the land, where the gentle belong and where the field is to be strong, she's bestowed her song on her soul. And a trifle old fashioned from some antique century in time. But to me, she's a long ago lady of pride and compassion. With elegant wrinkles, I'm long to hold on to. She's a maid of an era the country's forgotten, save Vermont. For the freedom she shares with the souls of the land, where the gentle belong and where the field is to be strong, she's bestowed her song on our soul. Thank you, and the rest. And I should tell the rest of you, we've already arranged when uh, next summer to go out on the on, on the Marcel, the research ship. But John's invited. Right, I, we're charging him for that. He has to sing a song <laughs> we get there, for the lake. Yeah. And we go back so far. What did? What did? How did Mia? Oh, uh, describe Marcel. My daughter Maya, who's now Maya. 33, when she was about three years old, and we were at the Leahy's in Virginia, uh, or we were introduced her to Patrick, and she said, oh, that's Patrick who's owned by Marcel. That's right. <laughs> and at three years old, she was the wisest person in the room. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
Yes, please. Okay. Yes, I'm here. I want you pick up. I'm afraid of this wiggly thing. I don't want to take a chance to drop it. Thank you, sir. Can I give you my point? Yes. Yeah, I did. I thought so. Yes, I did your mind. So thank you. It's, uh, well, it's been a lot to me. I mean, they, you should see the crux of the law enforcement thing. But this, this is like extraordinary. I'm glad you like that. Yeah, I do. I'm, uh, All right. Done there. Well, we have a moment of transition. We're going to convene right. Paul Costello, who was the last one up here late, which is fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Paul was late. A couple of quick housekeeping things for folks that may not know this. There are a couple of restrooms behind the uh, the pump house, as they call it here. Again, the restrooms are behind here. Do not use behind here for the restrooms. There are a few restrooms right behind the facility here. Uh, a special thanks to our vendors, uh, specifically to Ben and Jerry's, to Mediterranean Mix, to Penza's Pizza, to Salt and Rye. Let's hear it for them. That's amazing. It's, it's, it's one of six. That's the bar amazing. is open in Salt and Rye. That does not mean it's an open bar. It's one of six. But you can go there and grab a, a drink. We're now going to transition and talk a little more about why we're here, which is our community. And I'd like to turn things over. To the USDA uh, State Director Sarah Ware. Sarah. Yeah, we'll go there now. Good afternoon again, everyone, and welcome back. I have to admit, Ted is the only one who could actually be in the shade from that from that awning. I wish I was. Um, but the weather turned beautiful for today's event, and we are so excited that everyone is here. Um, as Ted said, I'm with USDA Rural Development, and one of the things that our senator has done for us over the years is to be one of the lead authors in many, many changes to the Farm Bill, which authorize funding to come to our communities, to come for our community downtown infrastructure, to come for rural small businesses, to come for ag producers, uh, and to come to the community institutions, be they a gazebo in the middle of the park, be they a library, be they an arts and cultural center. Uh, and Senator Leahy has been a champion for community development through the authorization of the Farm Bill again and again and again. I wanted to start this afternoon by saying, what does the Farm Bill and criminal justice reform and farm to school and a research vessel in Lake Champlain and Batman have in common? And really the answer is the support of the senator. So he really gets around and does all kinds of things and we are all grateful for that. My job this afternoon is to introduce a series of speakers um, who are gonna share with you only five minutes of comments each, <laughs> five minutes each of comments to share a little bit about what working with the senator has meant to them and for them and for their communities or their institutions over the years. Um, I also want to say that I share Senator Leahy's love for comic books. And one of the things that I have always been puzzled about is his fascination with Batman. Batman feels to me like one of the grimmer comic books out there, very dark, very mysterious. Uh, but then I realized Batman is just a regular guy with a position of power and privilege who is not a superhero from another planet, doesn't have special powers gifted by nuclear radiation, but is really truly just a human who is using his smarts, his intelligence, his power, technology, science, to be able to work with law enforcement and, in, and ensure that his community is championed. And I thought about the parallels to Senator Leahy. Now, maybe not the dark night, uh, maybe our, our white night for Vermont, but I wanted to say that if I had been able to bring a statue today, it would have been a statue of Batman in green with the state of Vermont as its flag, as his cape. I think that would have been a good statue for you, Senator. 
All right, so with that, I'm gonna introduce our first speaker. Uh, ben Doyle is the president of the Preservation Trust of Vermont. He is also a former English teacher. So I wanna say don't ever try to compete with him in a game of words. All right, Ben. Thanks, yeah. Thanks sir. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry, it is the English teacher in me that uh, made me prepare remarks. So it's, it's wonderful to see you all. I'm so honored to be here. Um, my name is Ben Doyle, and I'm the president of the Preservation Trust of Vermont. For those of you that aren't familiar with the trust, we're a nonprofit organization dedicated to building community through the preservation and revitalization of Vermont's historic buildings, villages, and downtowns. We provide communities with technical assistance and funding. Last year, we worked on 281 projects in 144 communities. Since PTV's founding more than 40 years ago, by his first campaign manager, first chief of staff, and good friend, the late Paul Brune, Senator Leahy has steadfastly worked in partnership with PTV to help Vermont's rural communities thrive. Senator Leahy has always understood the importance of historic preservation and that Vermont's sense of place is unique, valuable, and worth protecting. There is no leader who has been more supportive of our work. As we will hear from others today, Senator Leahy has done so much for Vermont's downtowns. Think of what places like Waterbury, St. Johnsbury, Brattleboro, or Burlington would look like, would feel like, without his leadership. But the Senator has also always remembered Vermont's smaller communities, our villages, places that might not have the bustle of a Burlington, but that have a strong sense of community and collectively are just as critical to Vermont's identity and future. After all, it takes a village. Here are just a few examples of the Senator's leadership. In 2005, Senator Leahy, Leahy established the Village Revitalization Initiative Program. The program enabled PTV to invest $2.4 million in 27 communities, resulting in $27 million worth of total project costs. In 2019, using the VRI program as a model, the Senator created the National Paul Brune Historic Revitalization Grant Program. This program supports rural communities across the country, working to preserve significant historic properties and foster economic development. Thanks to the Senator, to date PTV has been able to grant out more than $1.9 million to 22 communities in Vermont. Last year, <laughs> last year Senator Leahy secured $1 million in congressionally directed spending, spending for community-owned general stores in Vermont. And this year, in the most recent appropriations process, the Senator has championed a new collaboration between PTV, the Vermont Council on Rural Development, and the Vermont Community Foundation that aims to help revitalization efforts in Vermont's smallest communities. For those of us from Vermont's small towns, the impact of the Senator's commitment is personal. I grew up in Sutton Village in the Northeast Kingdom. It's a wonderful community, but it probably isn't the kind of place you would go to unless you were going there or got lost on your way to Barton. About a decade ago, when Sutton's municipal well became, became contaminated, the kids in the graded school couldn't drink the water. Sutton didn't have the local resources to solve this problem on its own. But thanks to the Rural Economic Area Partnership Zone created by Senator Leahy nearly 25 years ago, Sutton was able to secure a USDA Rural Development Grant that made necessary health and safety improvements possible. The investment helped ensure that Sutton Village will remain a viable community for the future. That's just one village, but Senator Leahy's commitment, his belief that small towns matter, has been felt by villages across Vermont, Albany to Alberg, Guilford to Guildhall, Landgrove to Leamington. For those of you who knew my predecessor, the Senator and Marcel's good friend, Paul Bruin, you might remember that he had an expression that he would often use after giving someone detailed instructions on how to solve some complicated, seemingly intractable problem. He'd say things like, do this, do that. Now remember, don't mess it up. <laughs> if you did know Paul, you'll know that I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> Paul used a more colorful version of the phrase, don't mess it up, but I'm not yet at the stage of my career where I feel comfortable quoting him, plus my children are here. <laughs> Legend has it that Paul's use of the expression originated from a pivotal debate during the Senator's first campaign. Just before the Senator walked on stage for the debate, Paul said, now remember, don't mess it up. Well, of course he didn't. Senator Leahy won the race and has gone on to have one of the most distinguished careers of public service in Vermont's history. Still, 
I've often wondered why Paul continued to use that phrase. Maybe it was a kind of good luck charm, a way to encourage, a way to tell someone he believed in them. But I also think Paul used that expression because of his friendship and association with you, Senator. You didn't mess it up. You hit it out of the park. I won't presume to speak for Paul here today, but I can honestly say that he was so proud of you and all that you have done for the state he loved. All of us are. I'm 47 years old. Like many people here today, I have never known a Vermont without a Senator Leahy. But the truth is, I never will. Neither will my kids. Senator, through your exceptional leadership and commitment to all of us, you have shaped Vermont in an indelible way for future generations. You've protected our past and preserved our future. Because of that, I'm deeply honored on behalf of the Preservation Trust of Vermont and its board of directors to present you with a Lifetime Achievement Award for Excellence in Historic Preservation. I'm sure there isn't room on your wall for all the awards and accolades you've received during your distinguished career, but I'll hope you, I hope you will appreciate the feeling of admiration behind this one. The award, which is right here, you're the best, Ted, um, reads, the Preservation Trust of Vermont Lifetime Achievement Award, prevented to, pre presented to the Honorable Patrick Leahy for his commitment to historic preservation and the revitalization of Vermont's villages and downtowns. Vermont has had no better friend. Thank you, Senator. And in the words of the old country, Solange. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. See, I told you, former English teacher, right? There is one person I can think of, though, who can outdo him in speechifying. Uh, this is one of my favorite Vermonters. She uh, has been the former executive director of the Church Street Marketplace, the former secretary of the Vermont Agency of Commerce and Community Development, and the present grandmother to five grandkids between the ages of 16 and just under one, Molly Lambert. <laughs> So, Senator and Marcel, what an honor it is to be here with you today. Thank you for all that you're doing. As we shine a spotlight on downtowns and village centers throughout our state, uh, there's a fellow named William Hudnut III. You may know him, uh, Senator. He was the former mayor of Indianapolis. And he wrote a book about the revival of cities throughout America. And in that book, he said, downtown supplies the heartbeat of the region. And what could be more true? As we celebrate today, this man and this woman who have been the heartbeat of our state for the last four and uh, most of the next decade. So we thank you for that. And you, with your colleagues from the congressional delegation, our governors, our local legislators, both state and federal, all of the investors and the developers, and the community organizations that have focused on downtowns, but you're the one who has made sure that that artery, that federal partnership, that thing to feed the heartbeat stayed open and clear all these years. I had uh, the most wonderful time as the executive director of the Church Street Marketplace from 1991 to 1998. And the marketplace was young then, but before a few months passed, I was the envy of all of my colleagues at the International Downtown Association. And you know why? It was because of you. It was because of your incredible staff that did everything to support the success of our efforts in downtown Burlington. 
And I don't know if Peter Clavel and Betsy are still here, but uh, Peter was an incredible leader following Bernie Sanders. At any rate, I had that firsthand experience. And then again, as Secretary of Commerce, I saw that our Senator's commitment wasn't only to downtown Burlington, it went to every community in our state. That level of commitment, that level of passion, that level of understanding how important downtowns and village centers are to all of us who depend on good policy, good fiscal assistance, good leadership to make us successful. So, Senator and Marcel, you have received beautiful, incredible awards and resolutions and the Preservation Trust Acknowledgement. So, Hank and I bring to you a poem written by our son in 2018 who dedicated that poem to us because we had the privilege of receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Vermont Council on Rural Development for our work in Vermont's communities. And our son, Kevin, has given us permission to rededicate that poem to you and Marcel. And I'm gonna read it real quickly. And th I think I'm doing well on time, aren't I? Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. For you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not too long, is it? Uh, no, no. The poem is called A There, There. Is it the number of stop signs and traffic lights? Or a village green with a whitewashed gazebo? Certainly it must have a post office, the red, white, and blue standing sentinel nearby, a bar and a gas station, and that statue of someone that no one in town knows much about. It's a library sitting silent, contemplating history. And this is where the red, white, and blue standing sentinel nearby. Where once famous musicians will play at a to old fans and kids on computers in a corner coffee spot where guns used to be made. Wanderers and wealthy aspire to it, a place they talk about being from and familiar with, not south or next to or near, but a proud black circle on the map where old roads and friends happily meet. The circle expands, evolves, reinvents itself with metal, paint, and pressurized treated wood, delaying disorder's endless march, sometimes hiding the time-tested truth, eluding those who reside in the growth of the light. The there there is a philosophy, not geography. It's anchored by neighbors, not Ikea and Whole Foods. It is wrought by mindful energy, emergent, altruistic, and pure. Billions of busy neurons snapping in a selfless buzz and a full heart in the center of it all. So thank you, Senator and Marcel, for your full hearts and ensuring that this Vermont is a place we will always be proud to call home. So Ted told me when I introduced the speakers, I had to be nice. Um, but I figured, because Ted started us off late, we could just skip him. 
right? Is that okay? No, just kidding. Ted is one of the only Vermonters I know who is actually known only by his first name, a little bit like Madonna. Um, <laughs> Ted, although he has been many things, including often late, he is now at the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and he's here to present a resolution for the senator. You've taught me well, thank you. Every select board member, every village trustee, every mayor in the city, in the state of Vermont, has had the luxury for the last 48 years of knowing money wasn't the problem. There's one man who can take credit for that, and that's Senator Patrick Leahy. That is a truism. Money is not the problem in Vermont. And every community is getting people together to define a common vision and march forward. If you've driven on a road in one of your downtowns, in towns like Springfield, Barrie, and Waterbury, where federal funds have redefined a town, if you've watched affordable housing be rebuilt in your downtown in the upper stories in a partnership with VHCB through earmarks that Senator Leahy gave to VHCB with no credit necessary, where other members were putting their names on buildings, Senator Leahy was building units of affordable housing for low-income Vermonters in your downtowns, in St. Albans, in Bennington, in Brattleboro. As a select board member, as a city councilor, as a trustee, when you look to your town forest, the federal funds that VHCB is spending on your town forest and you match with your tax dollars are because Senator Leahy created a pilot program in a farm bill to create town forests and preserve forest land. If you have a fire department with a new fire engine, a search and rescue team, a swift water rescue team, it's because of Homeland Security dollars that Senator Leahy secured for that town. Money has not been the problem. We're all nervous it's about to be, but we trust Senator Sanders, Congressman Welch, and maybe another Congresswoman, a Congressperson, uh, will, will soon take up that mantle. The Vermont League of Cities and Towns Board of uh, Directors, which rep is represented by the uh, managers, the mayors, the select board members, passed a resolution honoring you, Senator, uh, for everything you've done for communities. Thank you so much on behalf of every municipal official in the state of Vermont. God bless Senator Patrick Leahy. You do it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Thank you, Ted. And you were he was really quick, Paul. So you you can take the extra minute. Okay? Yeah. All right. Next, um, I want to welcome to the stage Commissioner Josh Hanford of the Department of Housing and Community Development with the Vermont Agency of Commerce and Community Development. And here's my nice thing to say about Josh. Josh is the epitome of a Vermont sports person. He's a biker, he's a hiker, mountain climbing, fisherman. So, you know, they're Mr. Vermont. Thank you, Thank you Sarah. And when Ted uh, asked if I'd say a few words, I said, of course, I was honored. Um, and that he re repeated right back to me, and you can be quick, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna be quick, um, but I wanna put something in perspective through one program and, and me, the connection to Patrick Leahy and what he's meant for this state and for the country, really. So the year Senator Leahy was elected to Senate, 1974, the year I was born, the first, one of the first bills he voted on was the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974. That program, that act, among other things, created the Community Development Block Grant Program, which is why I'm in Vermont, why I started my career, and why I'm here today. That program, in Vermont has already funded over 1,400 projects since it was started, with over $360 million put to work in our communities, every community across the state. <laughs> Leveraged over $2 billion to date. So with that one program, and that one act, really all of Vermont, every downtown, every community, deserves to thank Senator Leahy. He's affected so many lives with your service, and everyone thanks you for that, including myself and 
as I said, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your leadership and your support. And I just want to thank you for all your service. Thank you, Josh. Uh, our next speaker is from the center's hometown. I want to welcome Ann Watson, who is the mayor of Montpelier and also an avid Frisbee player. <laughs> Hello, thank you. My name is Ann Watson, mayor of Montpelier, as Sarah mentioned. Uh, and how did I get the honor of speaking today? Well, before he was Senator Patrick Leahy, before he was even an attorney, he was a young man from Montpelier. And so I am delighted to be uh, here to, to honor him. Uh, one of the things that comes with being mayor is you get to know a lot of people. And uh, one of the people that I've gotten to know recently is Maxine Leary, who, uh, if you've ever gotten to meet her, she uh, was one of the senator's grade school teachers. I believe he, she was uh, his music teacher back in, in grade school in Montpelier. And if you get the opportunity to meet her, one of the first things she will tell you is that she was the senator's uh, teacher back, back in the day. Uh, she is so proud to have been uh, the senator's teacher, and who wouldn't be? Oh my word, I, I just wanna say that you've made Maxine Leary proud, you have made Montpelier proud, you have made Vermont proud. We are so grateful for you. Uh, as we've been talking about here uh, this afternoon, so many cities and towns across Vermont have benefited from uh, the, the money that the senator has insured uh, for us. And I just want to highlight a couple of those projects that we've been able to uh, do in Montpelier. One was building the transit center right in the center of our downtown. It turned a former dump, a former parking lot, uh, into affordable housing and uh, bus station. Uh, and was, uh, is going to be a part of the Cross Vermont Trail, connecting uh, a, a, a shared use path across the, the state of Vermont, as well as our district heat plant, uh, which has allowed many of our downtown buildings, including the municipal buildings in uh, our, our city's downtown, to get off of fuel oil so that we can be burning uh, wood chips instead of fossil fuels, which is uh, so important as we know climate change is uh, a very important topic uh, of our time. So uh, I want to thank uh, the Senator for all that you have done uh, for not just Montpelier, but uh, for cities and towns across Vermont. Our communities are more connected and more vibrant because of you. Our downtowns are stronger because of you and Vermont is a better place because you've been willing to serve. And while I don't have it physically here with me today, I am so proud to present you uh, with a key to the city of Montpelier, which I will be getting to you very soon. So thank you, Senator. We are so proud to have you from Vermont. Thank you, Anne. Our last speaker, before we turn it to the Senator himself this afternoon, um, is my former boss, a gentleman by the name of Paul Costello. Many of you probably know Paul. Will you raise your hand if you've interacted with Paul? Yeah, a lot of you know Paul Costello because his job, like the Senator's and like the Senator's team, is to get out in the community and to learn about what the community needs and then to raise up the community itself and help it to think about itself, be inspired to do things for itself. Uh, Paul is another champion of Vermont and the former executive director of the Vermont Council on Rural Development. So, what an honor to be on a panel with you five and to be able to speak the praise of Senator Leahy. In May of 1966, my father, Edward J. Costello, swore Pat Leahy in as Chittenden County State's attorney, replacing Jack Fitzpatrick. Pat was 26 years old, right, Senator? I have two photos from the celebration of that evening. Graced by bottles of Schlitz, smoke from pipes, cigars, cigarettes in every ashtray. One photo shows Pat leaning forward into the mic, full head of hair, giving a speech, 
telling to tales of the, of the law, and everyone in the room is sitting back in rapt attention and humor. The other picture, Pat's sitting next to my father, and my father is looking up, and Pat is looking down. Everyone's looking down. And I imagine that my father is sharing the perspective of their meaning of their common work. He is an Augustinian. He would talk about the city of God, the eternal platonic forms of truth, truth, beauty, justice, and this world, the city of man, the city of humanity, ever imperfectly reaching to the full extent of our powers in aspiration to these ideals. And the key instrument towards this aspiration for justice, fairness, democracy, and progress to these men was the rule of law. When you picture Senator Leahy's incredible career, you see a prosecutor who enforces the law become one of the most influential national creators of law for the future of our country. You see his role advancing statute that ends the, the Vietnam War, upholds and expands human rights, protects the environment, bans landmines, strengthens organic farming, protects dairy farms, conserves and supports the working landscape, sparks economic opportunity for all, enhances net neutrality, invests in downtown sparks, and contributes and invests to Vermont's people in all of their hopes for a better future. Senator Leahy developed the means to fulfill and the hopes and priorities of Vermonters more than any other Vermont politician in history. There's no doubt about that. He built statute and then he built his appropriations muscle to fund national and Vermont priorities like no one else. And of course it took, did take a village as people have said, without Marcel, heart and leadership never could have happened. You needed your first chief of staff, beloved Paul Broom. You had incredible people that you brought together. Chuck Ross, Bob Paquin, J.P. Dowd, Adrian Wojciechowski, Chris Saunders, Tom Berry, Ted Brady, John Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> they hit the ground for you in Vermont. They represented you. They were sterling. I need to thank you for your enduring support for the Vermont Council on Rural Development and all the communities and people of rural Vermont that we serve. We knew you were listening when we put out an evaluation of a public policy need. You also lent the leadership of your staff to a thousand and one nights on the road and to every policy initiative we ever convened. They were at the table and they were providing leadership. When I was a child, attorney and then state's attorney Leahy would stop in to sit with my dad in his study. They talk plea deals, they talk bail, they talk cases, but they never forgot the human needs of the individuals at law as well as the needs of their families. That was who they were. You know how some people can punctuate their time so that they shake the hand of a child and they look with deep attention, recognition, encouragement, and they listen to that child as an equal. You probably all remember someone doing that. I hope so. Pat Leahy was that guy. And what a politician, right? <laughs> Let's not forget, this is business. Um, he was good at getting in front of a camera, <laughs> but he gave more than he took. How many people received a call from the senator the day after the death of a beloved one, a family member, a father or mother? How many local and nonprofit leaders heard Senator Leahy, when he was thanked, say, no, thank you. You're doing the work. We're making progress because of you. How many people were recognized and praised by the senator? How many heard the senator say something like, your parents would be proud of you? Listening can be taken to the point of transcendental apperception. Senator Leahy always listened to his constituents, recognizing the myriad experiences of people and the complex facets of in issues, and then adding up a platform of action. In statute and in funding, 
I think this is key to the man's depth and his political acuity. When he spoke about justice in the Judiciary Committee or on the Senate floor, he did so with deep principles of someone who listens and adds up the voice of the people, but also with an ear to the common good and to the better angels of our nature. I want to thank you, Senator, for upholding the rule of law, for your long battle to support democracy, civility, and justice, both on the Senate floor and for the country. Hard, long, arduous work never done. The work of democracy that we all need to recommit ourselves to. We need to rededicate ourselves to this battle with courage to ensure the future of Vermont and our nation. I also want to thank you, Senator, not for the money, because someone else has already done that. I want to thank you for your great heart, for listening so well, for your myriad kindness, and for your deep care and concern for your constituents. You're a great soul, Senator Leahy. You make me proud to be a Vermonter. I can imagine and maybe as all of us here together share at least part of the pride that your parents must have had for you and for all that you and Marcel have accomplished. So thank you, Senator Leahy. It's an honor to be here and be part of this with you. Senator, we all want to say thank you in so many ways. Please, yeah, please come up. <laughs> um, I want to say that one of the things that is so important about Batman is that Batman has a team. People who build the machines, people who take care of the mansion, the, um, the deputy police sheriff, what's his name? Yep, Commissioner Gordon. Commissioner Gordon. Thank you. Batman has a team, and I feel honored to be one of those people, like so many mentioned today, who feel like they are a part of your team. I feel honored and privileged to have the role that I have and to work for our federal government and for the president, but I feel more honored that you nominated me. And that was a phenomenal honor and a phenomenal phone call to get. And I wanna say that you are Vermont's superhero. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, all of you. And that was an easy nomination to make, I can tell you. And I'll let you in on a secret. I'm not really Batman. He, he uses a different kind of cane. That, uh, but it does feel good to be walking again after a month in the hospital, and I appreciate this. And I actually have enjoyed being in Batman movies. I, I had my first library card in Montpelier at the age of four, and I, among other things, was an avid reader of Batman, and I like the fact he did use his brains. And Paul. I remember sitting there sometimes in, uh, at midnight with your father. We had to get a search warrant at 1 o'clock in the morning. And your mother coming down and saying, I made some cookies today. Give me some energy. And your family, your father gave the, gave the energy. And, I, and all of you are here. Um, as Ted Brady has heard me say so many times, it's important what we can do uh, in this state. And none of us ever believed anything was impossible. Uh, we talked about Paul Brune. I kept referring to some of these grants as Brune grants. He said, don't use that word. Don't use that word there for everybody. Well, we on the day we were doing the memorial service for him, we passed in the U.S. Senate unanimously to name the rural development programs throughout the country as a Paul Broom 
rural development grants. And I think <laughs> in that, in that I could bring in everything everybody here has talked about. And uh, Ben knows how important the Preservation Trust of Vermont is to all of us here. I was born in Montpelier, myself in Newport, Vermont. We have certainly seen so many of the things that we took for granted, beautiful buildings, wonderful places. They were torn down in the 40s and 50s and 60s, and now we have people here who can preserve them. And how much that, what a difference that makes. And communities, and communities develop, uh, as Josh knows, they become, they become better places. They bring everybody together. And you talked about where it ends. The mayor had to leave, uh, and, but how important it is that we get these things done. I'm not going to give a long speech, but just how this. I think when you, whether you were born into Vermont and Vermont values or acquire them, you're a better person, and Vermont's a better place. I remember, it was true, I remember when, um, when Hurricane Irene hit us, and how terrible it was us hearing these things the day after the, um, the, the day after the flood was a beautiful day, clear day, as compared to the horrible day the day before. And I flew around the state with the Adjutant General and the Governor in a small helicopter. We had the door open on the side. Uh, so I'm strapped in and I'm taking photographs of everything I've seen. It's all I could do to keep from crying. In fact, I think I did in a couple of places. It reminded me of the stories I heard from my parents about the flood of 27, which I thought, well, that's ancient history. And then I'd see bridges twisted like a child's toy lying in the side of the river. A farmhouse that had been on one side of the river down on the other side, upside down. I also saw people coming together. I remember asking a man in Brownsboro. I said, uh, he was shoveling out the thick mud in her store. I said, this your store? Nope. Uh, do, you live, do you live here in Brownsboro? Nope. I thought, well, I'm, I'm being a really good conversationalist here. Uh, I said, where do you live? Next town over. I said, okay, why, why are you here? I said, I wasn't hurt, but I was. I hope somebody come and help me. That's what I'm doing here. Can't stand here and talk all day, Senator. Nice to see you here. <laughs> but I told that story on the Senate floor, but more importantly, I took those pictures and I brought them to the White House. And I'd come into the Oval Office and be handing them to President Obama. And after about the second or third time asking for money for Vermont, I come in with the pictures, and he said, do you have anything nice to look at? Not the destruction. I said, I happen to have, and I had him a picture I'd taken at an event where he and Michelle Obama were just holding hands, looking at each other. He said, okay, tell me more about what you need in Vermont. <laughs> but the, the thing is, we came here to Waterbury. Marcel, remember that? And we saw the awful destruction, buildings destroyed, businesses wiped out, and the sign in one of the stores near the bridge, this side of the road, thanking the volunteers who came in to help. And I remember saying to the governor and others, we've got to rebuild Waterbury. And why do we have to rebuild it? Because the people of Waterbury will make sure it's done right. And you did. And as the money came in, I saw that. I, I've used all of you who are here and, and the town of Waterbury that I knew way back in the day when my parents had the Waterbury record. I see the spirit of Vermont, the best of Vermont, 
the cooperation of Vermont. And look what resulted. I think it was better than that. Molly, you remember when we would look at things like the church re re redevelopment and making that a much better place. But we do it all over, all over the state. And I've insisted that in the help I give, somebody said, well, does that help in political areas? I said, I don't care what the politics of the community is. I don't care if you have a Republican or a Democrat running the community. I just want the community to be a proud part of Vermont. And that's what I try to do. So I, I had a much longer speech. I'm not going to give it to you for enough speeches, but Marcel and I are going to be on a plane in a few minutes going back to Washington where, among other things, I have a briefing on the uh, appropriations bills for the rest of the year. And uh, Vermont will do well. <laughs> I, I, treat, I treat this alphabetically. I, I don't take, may play favorites among the 50 states. I do it alphabetically as chair, starting with Vermont. <laughs> and. Uh, I was never good at that part of the school, but I did enjoy reading. I did enjoy reading about Batman, you are right on that. Incidentally, the beauty of being in all those Batman movies, they pay a lot of money and I give every cent to the children's library in Montpelier, which is a lot nicer than it was when it was that basement room. When I would go in there and have a wonderful Mrs. Holbrook, a wonderful librarian, said, did you read that book you got two days ago? I said, I did. She asked me questions about it. She said, now read this. And it was, it was a wonderful experience. But it was a community experience. And for years I've known people that I saw as children in there who are now running businesses, doing other things. Some were in, in the law with me, not against the law, we're in the law, I mean, I want to add. And I thank you all. I thank you because my son and I will come home in January, and we know we're going to be happy with all of you as our neighbors. Thank you very much. Tell me when I do my exercises by January, I can go cross country skiing again. I can't wait. Yeah. Thank you. Well, the senator, uh, well, I yell at you. Patrick has left me. Not you, Patrick, the other Patrick. Great. Uh, while the senator says his goodbyes, uh, he told me on his way out that it was rude of us not to buy you a drink. And so I'm pleased to say that uh, the sponsors are uh, going to open up that bar, not, not forever, for a short period of time. <laughs> so at the end of this, I hope you'll uh, raise a glass to Senator Leahy. I also need to specific, yes, let's hear it. That's a good thing. <laughs> I'd also, I need to thank the folks at the Waterbury uh, Rotary for allowing us to use the park for, yes, let's hear it for the Waterbury Rotary. And I need to thank APQ and Patrick for helping us out with the sound today. Let's hear it for that. <laughs> Senator said we could only hire people whose names were Patrick. It was kind of weird, but we tried. <laughs> but uh, with that, let's one more time hear it for Senator Patrick Leahy. Is John still here? Uh, Dwight's going to play right in the corner. 
We are going to now be great. Stick around, have a drink, have a piece of pizza, have some food. We're going to be joined by Dwight of Dwight and Nicole, who's going to uh, play a little music for us. time for the senator, huh? Let's give it up for him. And, uh, well, my name is not Patrick. Uh, they, no one sent me the memo. Uh, my name is Dwight Richard, and I'm here to uh, honor the occasion, play some, play some stuff. So, uh, here's, a, here's, a, here's, a, here's one a little bit far back in the continent. This next song uh, I feel like is appropriate for the occasion because it's a song about finding where you can be of service in life and then uh, doing your best to ride the ups and downs. This one's called High Low.
fussing and I'm quite the pain. I try to be of service. Oh, I'm easy to stare And I feel the high 